Hello, everyone. How's everyone going here? Good? Good? Cool. <laughs> and my name is Ivan. I'm, uh, I work for ET Today. Uh, I'm responsible for Android apps in ET Today. So uh, if you happen to have download the app, uh, that's the work of our teams. Okay. So um, today I would like to present a uh, calling flow application and the testing on Android. Uh, as you may know that um, Kotlin Flow is a, a synchronous library developed by Jeff Brands, right? And uh, it was added into uh, Kotlin Coroutines API in version 1.3. So it's a relatively new API in Kotlin. Okay. So these are the topics we are going to uh, cover today. So first, I'll give you some uh, background information about Flow. And then I'll uh, show you some uh, Flow application of Flow. After that, I will show you two ways to test Flow. And finally, I will share some of our experiences and uh, some pitfalls that we, when, we, well, when we are using Flow in production, OK? So without further ado, let's get started. OK. So the first one is, what's Flow? Uh, as I mentioned, it's a, a synchronous library de uh, developed by JetBrains. And it's simple because it has an e easy to use API and uh, it's quite elegant, even for beginners. And the uh, learning curve is not that steep compared to RS Java or any other reactive libraries. So if you are a beginner, I recommend you can try it out. Okay. And another one is uh, language feature support. Uh, if you want to use Kotlin language features in uh, Flow, you don't need to do anything. You don't need to uh, import extra libraries to do it. You can just um, use it, yeah, because it's based on uh, Kotlin Coroutine API. But uh, if you are using RxJava, you want to use a uh, Kotlin language feature, uh, you might want to consider write, a, write extensions by yourself or, or you could use third-party libraries like uh, uh, RS Calling or something like that. Yeah. And the third point is um, flows are code. What what does that mean? Uh, it means uh, flows won't do anything until you call collect them. So it basically this is a, a really important concept in flow. So we have to remember that. Okay. So let me show you some examples of how to use Flow, OK? So the first one is pretty simple, actually. Uh, we could use uh, Flow off, and then we, uh, the items we want to emit in the Flow. And this can uh, declare a Flow. And then we could collect it and print it out. That's it. And here? Is another example show you another way to declare a flow. So you could use flow with a lambda and it emits items, whatever we want in the flow, and then we could collect it and do something else. Okay, so this is basically uh, two ways to declare flows. So the third example is more complicated, and if you are an experienced uh, developer, you might notice that, oh, there is something going wrong with this code. Yeah, it will throw exception. Yeah, it will throw the uh, index out of bound exception because uh, there is not every name in this flow uh, are longer than six. So it will throw the index out of bound exception. But uh, if you want to catch this exception, you could use uh, catch here. And also, you want to detect when will it become uh, completed. You can use on completion. So these are the functions we are commonly used in uh, Flow. So if you are trying to use Flow, these are the functions to go, OK? So let's talk about threading. Uh, threading operators in Flow uh, has only one operator called, called uh, Flow on. And we have to use it with uh, dispatchers. And these are the three dispatchers we commonly use in Flow. And for IO and MAN, you might probably guess their meanings by their names because it's IO and MAN, right? And for the default one, 
uh, what does that mean? It actually means that um, according to the document, it uses a shared pool of background tasks. So if you uh, want to run some uh, compute intensive data or compute intensive work, you can just uh, throw in the dis uh, default dispatcher here. Okay. So let's look at those examples. Okay, suppose we have a function here to get the user information from a remote server and it returns a flow of user information here. And we could call that function and get the flow and we could simply just call flow on and specify this flow to runs on IO thread. That's it. Yeah. Okay, so for the second part, I would like to share uh, flow applications, uh, for which is focused on Android, because uh, I will talk about like uh, UI events or uh, doing network requests on Android. So um, let's get to it, okay? So the first thing I would like to talk about is uh, using Flow with Retrofit. I suppose uh, most of the Android developers, they are really familiar with the Retrofit. So uh, we basically just wrap it into uh, Retrofit codes in code adapter, and we could write our own code adapter factory to it to produce it. And we could also use like uh, third-party libraries to do it. And uh, there's tons of them and uh, some samples over here, there. So if you want to use it, there's many resources you can Google, okay. And after preparing the code adapter factory, we could use it just like a normal factory here, yeah. And there is no perfect options for doing this and maybe you can just write it by yourself because it's just a class, but uh, you can you also use the libraries. There is no just the perfect way to do it or something like that. It, it only depends on your requirements, yeah. Okay, the second part is uh, using Flow with UI events. Uh, how, do we, how do we gonna do it? Uh, it actually, uh, the key concept is to just consider user input as a flow of UI events. So let me show you an example, okay? So suppose we have a button here, okay? And uh, we use a function clicks to convert the click listener to a flow of UI events. And then we could use it like a normal flow. We could use on each to detect when will it be clicked and then launch in specific scope. So this is the basic usage of uh, flow of UI events. So right now you might be wondering, so okay, that sounds very cool, but uh, how do we gonna do it? What's the advantage of doing it? Okay, so for me, the most important part is to bind uh, life cycles auto automatically. So we don't have to deal with the life cycles of uh, activities or fragments or something like that. And you also, uh, we don't need to do the uh, registering or unregistering listeners, something like that. So it, it really convenient, it's really convenient. Yeah. It also makes our code more readable. And it also helps uh, helps us avoid a uh, callback hell and the boilerplates, so we don't need to write things and again and again. And then right now you can write almost everything related to UI, uh, use it in Flow. So those are the um, advantage that we wanna recommend you to use Flow on UI events. Okay, let's talk about implementation. Okay, so the first thing you can use just a normal calling code to write your uh, extension by yourself. So you could write it based on their views or something else. You wanna do it, just write it. And if you are interested in how to do it, I also append the link here 
So you could check on that article if you want it. But um, most of the time, uh, we are lazy, right? So you might probably uh, consider using the libraries. So those are two libraries provide such a function. So we could use in our projects. So the first one would be uh, flow binding, and another one is co-bind. And in the following example, I will uh, show you how to use a flow binding in uh, our call calling code, yeah. Okay, so I will show you uh, three use cases that could use our uh, flow on the UI events. So for example, this one. Uh, we could uh, avoid the quick double clicks on button by using flow. So we have a button here and uh, we use uh, clicks functions provided by flow binding. And then we could sample it with two seconds. Uh, what does the sample mean? It means that uh, whenever the user clicks button and after two seconds, it will start emit items again. But in this two seconds, like, uh, in this two seconds, and it won't emit anything. So basically user clicks like uh, many times, it won't do anything. But uh, after two seconds, you will start emitting items again. So now the user clicks the button, it will have reaction, yeah. And then we could use this flow uh, to, to do on each or launch in specific lifecycle scope. Uh, in Android, you could get the lifecycle scope from the fragments or activities if you have a KTX in your library. Yeah, so that's the basic usage of flow. Another use case to implement the API search by text watcher. The goal here is to avoid the uh, requesting API frequently. So what do we gonna do? Actually, uh, we have a uh, added text here and we have a function provided by uh, flow binding. It's called uh, text changes. And then we want to skip the initial value because some edit text, they have a default text, right? And then we could sample it with two seconds, just like the previous one. And we could map it to string, sorry. Map it to string because edit text provides the character sequence. We don't want it, we want string. And then we could do it on each and uh, request the API. Yeah, that's basically how I do it. And uh, you could do some modification in advance to um, make it pe perfect. But this is a basic usage, okay. Okay. Let's talk about the third use case. Uh, the third use case is to de detect the gestures with the uh, untouch events. So we could de declare our own SEAL class that defines uh, touch types. So <clears throat> we have a, a X and Y coordinates here. And then uh, we declare the five types of touch events which is overriding the uh, touch events here. So we have uh, click, down, move, and up, and other. Because I'm too lazy, so I, I write other. But in real, real world use case, that could be many, right? Now we could write uh, our own custom extensions to classify touches, yeah. To, to classify touch events. So uh, we ta also tag the click reaction time here because uh, in normal touch events, we, if we don't do anything, we cannot uh, check if this touch event is a click or not. So we set a threshold to the time so we could know which one is the click event. And I didn't put the whole implementation here because uh, 
the code is a bit longer. And uh, I also append the source here, so you could check it out, find out how did I do it, and it's the whole code. Yeah. Okay, so now we could use our uh, custom extensions with the uh, touches, which is provided by flow binding. So those are the flow, and then we could do the same thing as well on each and uh, launch in lifecycle scope. Yeah. So those are use cases that we could use flow to our UI. And those are just uh, examples. And if you want to do more like uh, this one, you can do some modification on it and you will be much better. Yeah. So right now let's talk about testing. I will introduce two ways to test flow. So these are the two ways to test flow. The first one by using uh, mocking libraries as normal, yeah. And the second one is to use uh, flow assert or you can call it a term by. Okay, so first one, mocking libraries. Okay, so we don't do much, we don't need to do anything to the uh, flow. So they could use uh, mocking libraries, just an, as normal testing code. And we, we've known that uh, a lot of mocking libraries specifically for calling, yeah. And if you are already familiar with Mokido, you could use Mokido calling, but um, make sure you check on the version compatibility issue on their website because it's quite serious, I think. Yeah. So make sure you check on that before you use it. Okay. But uh, in my opinion, I personally recommend you to use Mark K because it has uh, DSL expressions and a bunch of extensions that could be really useful when we do unit testing. Okay, more examples, sorry. Today is all about examples. <laughs> okay, so uh, in the following example, I will follow a common structure here to show you how to do the test. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first one, we will declare a user information class to hold it, and it has name and an ID here. And we also declare a service interface here to provide user information. An API service to override the service and provide a fake user named John. And then now, this is our testing targets. Uh, we could just call it like a user repository takes a service as a parameter. And then we could get the user information emitted in the flow. That's it, so it returns a flow, that's our target. Okay, so the first step is to create a fake user, and then we create a mock API service by using mock K with generic types uh, API service here. And whenever the mock API service dot user called, we returns a fake user. Now we could test our user repository by creating the repository and get the user flow and collect it to see uh, those two users, are they equal or not? Yeah, so this is a quite simple example to show you how to test like a normal testing code, yeah. And another option is to use a flow assert, or you can call it turn by. A little bit history of it, it's originally from a library called SQL Delight. Uh, it was extracted into a small library called uh, turn by. So right now it's called turn by. Believe me, it's just an extension function of flow. That's it. 
and it also helps uh, to make our expressions more specific. So it did improve the code in readability. Because it provides these three functions to help us do the verification. And it also took advantage of channels API and coroutines API. Yeah. Okay, so this is the extension we talk about. And uh, it takes a timeout and a validation callbacks here. And we can see that uh, it provides a receiver type here. So we could use in Lambda, use those functions provided by flow term bytes in the Lambda. So let's look into the flow term by. So flow term by, it provides these three functions to help us do the ver verification. So we could use it like in the validation callback. Okay. Uh, let's talk about a little bit of channels. Because uh, unfortunately, in this session, I will not focus on the channels. But uh, we, could, uh, we can just have a little bit of uh, concept of it. Uh, we could consider it as a way to transfer information. So uh, like one can produce data and one could uh, re consume data. So one can send, one can re receive, that's it. Yeah, just have a little bit concept in your mind. Okay. So how does it work? I will give you a bigger picture of how it works. So first, our test team target the flow. And then we create a channel in the extension function and flow term by ter provides the uh, testing results. So whenever our flow emits items, it will go into the channel, and the channel will queue the items until the flow term by query the channel. So it basically simulates the flow emission in the uh, extension function. So I think it's quite a smart way to do the test. So if you are interested in how the implementation looks like, you could check out the code in GitHub. Okay, let's talk about the uh, example. So how do we gonna use it? First, we provide those fixed things in the code like a fake user or fake API service. And we create the user repository and get the user flow and call the test uh, extensions here. And as I mentioned, that will provide uh, those three functions in the Lambda. So as you can see, we have uh, expect item and uh, expect complete. So it will do the verification for us if you call the expect complete. Yeah, so that's the uh, basic usage of term by. Okay, so for the last part, I will share some of our experiences when we are using the calling flow on production. So yeah, threading operators sometimes could be really tricky. Because, for example, in this code, we call the subscribe on twice. As you can see, one for uh, I.O., one for computation. And actually, the second one will be ignored in this case. Because in ArcJava, it modifies the uh, chain below. So the second one will be ignored. But in Flow, the concept could be uh, really different from the previous one because let me show you an uh, example. So we do have uh, two threading operators here, uh, IO1 and uh, default one here. And how do we gonna examine it? 
So we could split it into three parts. Like uh, the blue one, it actually runs on I/O thread. The blue, uh, no, the green one actually runs on default. And the pink one, it actually runs on the outer coroutine scope, which is main thread. So as you can see, we could separate our code into three parts to know which threading it's doing. Yeah. Okay. Networking request. Okay. Uh, so whenever we want to try the API calls, uh, we always uh, sometimes we get the uh, exception because we reuse the retrofit code, and we didn't do anything to it. So it tells us oh, your code was already executed. So our solution is basically just simply co copy the code before we execute it. And we even do checks before we clone it. So if you happen to have the same situation before and you have another solution, maybe you can um, let, let me know and I will be appreciated. Okay, uh, another part is to uh, tell you some, something about the RX Java migration. If you are RX Java developers, you wanna uh, use Flow, what can you do? Actually, uh, you don't need to do the whole migration all at once uh, because the commits will be huge, so there must be some way to do it, right? And uh, we think uh, there might be another way to do it, so making incremental changes might be a good idea in this case. So let's introduce another tool to make us life better. <laughs> so this tool basically just uh, gives us ability to transform those uh, observables. So for example, if we want to have a transformation from observable to flow or flow to observable, something like that, we could use this tool to do it, okay. And it also provides some suspending extensions to help us do the migration. Let's, let's see more examples here, okay. So the first one is uh, if we want to convert the observable to flow, we could just simply code as flow. That's it. And it also works in the opposite way. We could convert back the flow to observable as well. So just code it. Yeah. If we want to convert the single to flow, that's okay. We could await the single value and emit it in the flow. So if you happen to uh, have the RS Java code in your code base and uh, you want to mi do the migration from RS Java to Flow, you could use this tool. It really helps a lot because we did it before and uh, we think, okay, it, it did help, yeah. So that was my presentation here. And uh, if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer it. Thank you very much, thank you. Oh, you can, you can scan the code to get the slides. Okay, thank you. So, Uh, what's the benefit if I want to migrate uh, ice Java to the Kotlin fraud? Uh, because using Flow, uh, sometimes there is no better uh, uh, solution for it. But uh, if you want to use ice Java, just use ice Java. Because ice Java and uh, co coroutine flows, they are really similar, similar, similar. yeah, really similar. But uh, there are some differences between those two. Like uh, RS Java has more uh, operators, but uh, Flow doesn't have that much operators. 
So if you want more operators, you have to write it by yourself, like a write some extension functions or something like that. But uh, yeah, there is no perfect options for doing it, doing R Java or doing Flow. It depends on what you need. There is no better way. Yeah. Another question is, uh, if I uh, if uh, if my uh, code base uh, uh, has a, a lot of uh, R Java, uh, oh. do you recommend uh, I migrate to the coding world? Uh, in this case, I might not agree with this because you use RS Java a lot and there's maybe a lot of de dependency on it. But if you really do want to do it, you can just use the tool I recommend you to do the incremental uh, changes there to make your code maybe to make the migration like uh, in two months or three months or even longer. Because doing it all at once is gonna be, gonna make your code base, like uh, produce a lot of bugs in your code base. So I don't recommend you to do the whole mi migration all at once, yeah. Uh, I want to know what's the purpose of using flow in retrofit instead of a uh, pure suspend function? Um, because other, because in our code base, other things we write, wrote in the uh, flow, but uh, you can also write the suspend functions with uh, retrofit. So there is no pure uh, benefit of doing it because I do know that uh, retrofit su support the suspend functions, right? So maybe you cannot, uh, maybe you don't do the uh, co adapter factory, you can do the same thing as well. So this is just an example, and you, do, you don't use it, that's okay, yeah. Uh, 